Long Island Sound is home to a diverse array of habitats, which provide food and shelter for fish, reptiles, birds, and a multitude of other organisms. As we look out in, into Long Island Sound, uh, first it's extremely exciting to realize that we have this vast natural area. It's open, it's unbroken, it's larger than the state of Rhode Island, and it's right next to us where we live on the shoreline. Long Island Sound as an ecosystem is definitely unique compared to other bodies of water. It's a huge estuary, one of the largest estuaries on the East Coast. Estuaries are very special places where fresh water and salt water mix. So they're renowned for being 10 times more productive than the coastal seas and 100 times more productive than the open oceans. The fact that so many people live within the watershed around Long Island Sound, there's a, a really high density of people, and that means there's a lot of competing uses for the resources. Trying to find ways to balance all of those competing uses is a huge challenge. There isn't one square acre of the Sound that isn't important for something. To minimize conflicts with the Sound's many uses today and in the future, Connecticut began work on a marine spatial plan. The Long Island Sound Blue Plan includes preserving the Sound's special ecosystems and resources, while making sure the decision-making process is science-based and inclusive of all stakeholders. In order to get our arms around how to protect this extremely important ecosystem for Long Island Sound, we really need to know what's in there, what makes it up, what are the ecologically significant areas that are most important for us to be aware of so that when change comes or new proposals are made, we have much more insight into those places that matter. We needed to find those scientists who could represent the different areas of Long Island Sound, whether it's the bottom communities, whether it's the birds, the seabirds, the marine mammals or the fish. Being on this committee has allowed me to hear from people who study fish, people who work with the aquaculture industry, people who study uh, sea turtles, people who think about phytoplankton. And so it just has forced me to really think more broadly about the issues that affect the sound. But really our task was to identify you know, the ecologically most significant areas, to try to prioritize so that we can say, you know, well, if you do have to do something that's going to disrupt the ecosystem, it would be way better to do it over here rather than in these areas because these areas are truly, you know, the most important. There are very specific areas, say off Faulkner's Island or the islands off Branford, that are key for an awful lot of the animals that use the sound and are commercially or recreationally important or ecologically important. The birds are important in a number of different ways. There are a number of species that are endangered or declining that um, rely on coastal marshes or coastal beaches um, or the islands out in the middle of the sound for nesting. But there are also many species that live on the water or in the water or flying above the water and that's where they find their food, whether they're catching fish or other, other organisms. Even the pieces that we don't see on a daily basis, such as the bottom communities and the snails and different soft bottom habitats, they are indeed connected to the larger organisms like fish and marine mammals. And so it's important as part of the planning process to understand how all those pieces are connected, what pieces are there and how they're doing. Really figuring out where we can do the most protection most efficiently is very hard unless you compile information across all of the things that are of interest. The public will be able to mix and match data sets based on their interests and their livelihoods and make new maps, hundreds of new maps if they choose, using the data that we've compiled. Previously, these data were in scientists' filing cabinets or in the library and not brought together in a single place. And just like a puzzle, once you get most of the puzzle pieces together, you see the big picture, but you also see the puzzle pieces that are missing. There are some parts of the ecosystem where we have a really good sound-wide understanding of distribution and abundance, but for others we just have patches of data. We have probably the most data for fish that's been collected over 30 years. It's just an amazing database, and yet you can't collect data in all parts of the sound because the equipment doesn't let you get into some of the real rocky, shallow areas. We have really good information in certain areas, 
but in a lot of places we just don't have very much knowledge about what birds are out there. So that has certainly shaped the research that we're doing here at UConn in collaboration with the DEP. Clearly the scientific experts are key. They have the knowledge, they have the data, they have the depth of, of understanding. But we've learned so much from a wide range of people. Recently, when it came to the seals, we realized that with all the work that we had done, we had missed some areas in the Fisher Island Sound area. That did not come from a scientist. It came from somebody who works in that area all the time and sees them. That counts. I would say explore the data. Go look at the maps online. If you see information there that you think needs to be updated, definitely get in touch and let us know. And we're always looking to improve data and improve the maps that are associated with this effort. If you would like to share your comments and concerns about the Long Island Sound Blue Plan, please visit our website for more information.